Here's another question from Morin's textbook on introductory classical mechanics. It's number 3.14, kind of a nice number, I think. Let's ask, what angle should we launch our projectile so that the area under the trajectory is a maximum? Kind of an interesting question. So if I was sort of imagining some sort of projectile that was creating a smoke screen or a streamers falling down as it went through the sky, what would maximize that, that cloud of area? Recall that we derived the trajectory equation. So this is the actual equation of the height of the projectile as a function of the position of it, the projectile from its launch point x as the distance horizontally along the trajectory times the tangent of the launch angle minus this quadratic term, which is good old g, x squared over 2 v naught squared. And I decided to write the 1 over cosine squared as secant squared. OK, let's jump right into it. Let's start by noticing that the area under this curve is given by good old fashioned integral calculus. It'll be the integral from x equals 0 all the way until the final range. And we might want to add over here our range equation, which we've used many times with the double angle 2 theta. And we want to integrate y of x dx. Okay, so this will be the integral from 0 to r of our trajectory function. x tan theta minus gx squared over 2 v naught squared secant squared theta dx. Notice that theta and v naught and g are all constants here. The x integrals are actually quite easy because this is just a polynomial. Our antiderivative of x squared gave us 1 third x cubed, which I combined with a 2. And now we just have to use the fundamental theorem of calculus to plug in our bounds. 0 gives nothing because both of these will just be 0. So I'm just going to plug in my r. OK, looking pretty good. Unfortunately, we now have to plug in our expression for r in terms of the other unknown quantities. Let's also go ahead and rewrite sine 2 theta while we're at it using the double angle formula, 2 sine theta cosine theta, and substitute these in. Whew, it's kind of long. But do notice that there will be common terms that we'll be able to factor out here in the end. For example, I will have a v naught squared squared from this term, so v naught to the fourth. And over here, I will also have v naught squared cubed divided by v naught squared. So that'll be another v naught to the fourth. For the g's, I have a g squared in this denominator, and I have a g times a 1 over g cubed, which is also a 1 over g squared, so I can factor that out. Everything else, though, will have to be written in terms of combining trigonometric functions. Let's bring this up to the top, and I'll also go ahead and replace tangent by sine over cosine while I'm doing that. OK, here is our area rewritten with some simplifications. I haven't fully simplified it, but I did combine a few of the numerical factors, giving us this 2 out front and this 4 thirds, which came from an 8 sixths. We can do one last bit of simplification here by noting that this sine and this sine become a sine cubed. This cosine squared and this cosine just become a cosine. Similarly, over here, this secant squared and this cosine cubed give us just a cosine with a sine cubed. So we end up actually having two common terms that we can bring together, 2 sine cubed cosine minus 4 thirds sine cubed cosine 2 minus 4 thirds is 2 thirds. And that's our nice compact expression for the area under this curve. Now the goal is to actually maximize the area under this curve. So we want to take the derivative with respect to theta and set that to 0.
Taking the derivative here will involve the product rule. So derivative of sine cubed will be 3 sine squared theta times cosine theta, and that's times cosine theta again, plus sine cubed times negative sine theta for the derivative of cosine. These can be combined together a bit or factored a bit. Notice that I have a sine squared here and I have a sine squared in this one. Let's factor that to the front. Okay, so see we factored a sine squared out of both terms. That leaves us with 3 cosine squared minus sine squared times sine squared. And remember that our goal is to set this derivative equal to zero to maximize this function. All right, well, to do that, either sine squared has to be zero, which gives us theta equals zero or theta equals pi. That means my trajectory has zero area. So that does extremize it with the number zero that minimizes it. What we want to do is maximize it though. So it must be the case that this term here is our zero. Setting this equal to zero and then dividing both sides by cosine squared gives us a nice equation for tangent. All right, we need the tangent to be equal to root three. That is actually a well-known value for the tangent function. So the arc tangent of root three will give us our final answer of 60 degrees. So when we launch our angle at 60 degrees, we're able to maximize the area that we find under this projectile trajectory. And in fact, we can then go back and plug this 60 in to find out what is the maximum area. Notice that we have our 2 thirds out front, our usual constants. And it is a good check to make sure that this combination of constants does have the right dimensions. Uh, meters, or let's just use dimensions, length over time to the fourth divided by length over time squared squared cancels all the time units, and I end up with length over length squared, which is length to the fourth over length squared, which is length squared. That is what we want for an area. Finally, we got to plug in these values. The sine of 60 degrees is also a well known function. That's root 3 over 2. That is cubed. And then the cosine of 60 is also well known to be 1 half. Substituting that all together gives us our final result for the maximal area. Let's see if we can do some cancellations here. So this three, root 3 cubed will be 3 root 3. The 3 in the denominator will cancel with that and just leave a root 3. The 2 cubed here and one of these 2's will cancel leaving a 2 squared, but another 2, which means it's leaving us a 2 cubed. So at the end of the day, we've got root 3 over 8, v naught to the fourth over g squared, is my maximal area for this projectile when it is launched at 60 degrees.